Live from London, it's Cowboys! Music's well, more welcome. fitting. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> one welcome one and all. We thought we'd go for it. It is, um, of course, uh, the day after all Hallow's Eve. So we thought we'd go for a little bit of um, Halloween music there. We will be returning to the usual music. <laughs> it's like an episode of The Monsters. I thought we'd go for a bit of that. Yes, it's once Scooby-Doo. Again, it's sco- oh, Scooby-Doo. It does sound a lot like Scooby-Doo. Once again, it returns like another Police Academy movie, like a bad penny, like an episode of Last of the Summer Wine. You know it's coming, but it's not going to be pleasant. Yes, this is the car show. It was built for your radio. We're back, and this week we've added vitamin C and the power to remove stubborn stones. We've got an hour or so of fun on the way, and we promise that it won't in any way be clean, politically correct, or respectful. But I digress. We've got the usual guff, a roundup of global classic uh, global car news from Daimler's to Daihatsu's and car news. We've got an appreciating classic the classic car selection, now without a jazz music, uh, we're taking you back to the 1980s and uh, the acronym Fix Off and Repair Daily, I believe. <laughs> it could be a Reliant Rialto, it could be a Chevy Impala, you're going to have to wait and see. Uh, we again travel far and wide to bring you long forgotten driving roads that are not to be missed in lost highways. And of course, it wouldn't be the car show on your radio without me exposing the contents of my bulging sack. For all and sundry to see, <laughs> I'll qualify that quickly, in the mailbag. No, he's not the Messiah. He's a naughty boy. Uh, do we owe John Cleese any royalties for that line? No, mm-hmm. only if you do it in a very high pitched voice. That's <laughs> okay, because it's just worse. <laughs> That's okay then. Uh, anyway, it's the time of the week uh, where we get to indulge your fantasy about owning and driving a lost car uh, that you've always dreamed about uh, before we shoot you down in flames and point out all the foibles that mean you shouldn't really buy it. And if you do, you'll regret it forever. Um, but we'll give you a second, uh, you'll give you a sound advice in regard to a classic car. This week, as Rich mentioned, it will be the lowdown on the Mark II Fiesta XR2. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, also nice. in show... We have the ever-popular car quiz. Uh, This week, it's called Sale of the Century. Uh, Not to be confused with that uh, Anglian TV show uh, with a similar name featuring Nicholas Parsons. Uh, Rich will be playing host, asking me questions about the best-selling cars in each year, and I'll be trying to answer correctly and win that all-expensive-paid visit to East London's Karachi Fried Chicken. Yes, of course, that's the other kfc chicken shop hey. <laughs> uh, and it's our halloween special <laughs> and we'll be telling you a frightening story uh, about almost getting conned into buying clear coat uh, added on to the car purchase <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> uh, i am simon chudron uh, the kind of man who knows right from wrong and when you're in love with a beautiful woman it's hard when you're in love with a beautiful woman you know it's hard. Everybody wants her. Everybody loves her. Everyone wants to take your baby home. Thank you, Dr. Hook. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to ask where it's hard. And I'm Richard Green. <laughs> and I have hugs from my honeys, pounds from the roughnecks. See my man. See I knew from the projects. Said he had beef. Asked me if I had my piece. Sure do. 222s in my shoes. Yep. I is from the hood and uh, just like notorious <laughs> B.I.G. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And, to, and this is, of course, Cowboy. OK, right. Time for my weekly rant where I turn into a miserable old codger and tell you kids how it was better in the war and the, the Cray twins were good because they only hurt her own, whatever that means. Uh, and that hackneyed old phrase is political correctness gone mad, which I truly believe is creation of the ruling class to make older people look bad. OK, OK, youngsters, I'll admit you're better looking than me. you got better clothes than me. You're probably not quite as jaded, but you ain't got children what you ain't got is experience and to misquote samuel l jackson experience goes a long way just got to ask Jimi hendrix what it does when you try to work out whether something will work or not i know let's ask this bloke with experience all right so you see where i'm coming from well here we go off to our destination folks and i promise it'll be a wild ride now if you're old enough to remember renewing your car insurance over the phone or getting a broker to do it for you then you're really showing your age in the 21st century of course we're all renewing our car insurances here in the uk online Mm -hmm. with comparison sites go compare compare the market compare the meerkat Go kill the meerkat, to name but a few. (laughs) These turgid search engines that supposedly find you the best deal in seconds. Seconds, how about two to three hours? You see, nothing has changed, folks. 
We're still only about 10 big insurance companies globally. You have MIG, IMG, I should say, uh, mm. AXA, Prudential, who in fact uh, worked hand in hand with the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency. You've got Zurich, Allianz, China Life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When you get a quote from a list of myriad of different car insurance companies, from Sheila's Wheels to Elephant Insurance, from the classic car insurance group to Churchill, named after a dog and not the Prime Minister. Well, <laughs> folks, it's all a big scam, as all of these hundreds and hundreds of insurance companies are underwritten by the top 10 or so I've already been talking about, and no one else. It's a bit of a con uh, that you as a consumer think you're going to get the best deal in the world by searching online. Well, you sort of. You're going to do the administrative role that insurance companies used to do for you. You're entering your details, you're filling out the forms, you're checking the data is correct, and let's hope you are, because if it's inaccurate, then you'll get no payout and you'll be end up in Pooh Creek with no oars. <laughs> no, filling out an online insurance form is like trying to date a supermodel. Difficult, expensive and time consuming. Not that I would know. No, that makes it sound a little too pleasant. No, getting online insurance is like dating a really ugly person. You know you're going to get shafted, but it's not going to be a good experience. <laughs> I spent a total, a grand total, of two and a half hours trying to insure two very cheap cars this week. Two and a half hours with two websites that already had my details on file. And guess what? What? Well, the cars are another year older, so worth less. I am another year older, so I have more experience. And still accident-free, as I have been officially for 20 years. And I am therefore less of a risk on the road. And yet both insurances increased in price. There are a group of terrible people who have very boring accounting jobs. But in the insurance game, they're like the hired assassins, the ruthless killers. Think the hammer from the Godfather movie. These people are called actresses. And what they do is assess whether or not you're likely, given your age, experience, where you live, your mother's maiden name, the breed of cat you had when you were two years old, whether or not you're likely to have an accident. And then they stack the odds way in their favour, like a bookmaker, and make sure you pay over the odds for basic insurance. It is bent as a £9 note. They use algorithms and many different kinds of software to ensure they always come out on top. However safe, however diligent or conscientious the individual motorist is, the insurance companies will always have the last laugh. There is a quote that goes, you can never avoid death and taxes. Well, I believe it should be rewritten for actress. You can never avoid death, taxes and insurance companies. The bastards. <laughs> Three hours that I will never get back. And it happens every single autumn. Two cars I have to reinsure. And it is depressing. For if you don't do that, you end up pay, sticking with the same insurance company and as you know three years later you'll be paying a thousand pounds when really you should be paying 300 mm, i hate those sites i i always struggle to remember how much no claims bonus i've got <laughs> um I, well it's, it's usually standard after nine years isn't it yeah That's but it. it says you've got these little drop down boxes and you go well is it is it 12 is it 11 is it 13 i don't know what it is i can't remember <laughs> this year i'm on up to about 20 worryingly i think about 20 24 mm. um, I've never had to claim touch wood on 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 my. Uh, maybe I've had to do it once or twice, but obviously I have the protected no claims. God, this is a really boring conversation. I just I just absolutely hate insurance companies because when I was a kid, I was told it will get cheaper the older you get. Well, yeah, I may be in that. I've I've got I've I spent less than five hundred quid on two cars, one being mm. two point four liters to petrol, and one being a one point six. And I live in a relatively safe area, mm. um, but. Still, um, I've got the good side. Of course, as I uh, as w when I age, uh, there comes a, a time where you're no longer safe. You're considered more of a risk, and that's the <laughs> era my father is falling into now. Going, why is it going up? Said so because you're getting older, and they're frightened you're going to crash into stuff. Uh, that's my little rant over. Uh, two and a mm. half hours. I shall never get back. Um, uh, right. Let's have. I think we should do a little bit of news. Fancy a bit of news? Yes. Can we have some music? Uh, I'm queuing it up and obviously waiting <coughs> for the band. Here they go. Yeah. <laughs> And first off, this week in What's the Point of That Car News, uh, Volvo, we love Volvo, uh, they claim that their new infotainment system based on Google's Android operating system, which if you didn't know, was called OS, uh, and developed with the help of an American tech giant, will be, quote unquote, as good 
to use as your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. uh, the new system, which will make its debut on the Volvo XC40, Recharge and Polestar 2 electric vehicles, uh, and then be rolled out across the Swedish brand's model lineup. Uh, it replaces the Volvo's bespoke system with an Android-based operating system that uses apps such as Google Maps and offers a uh, sat-nav with real-time traffic information. Um, users will be able to download third-party apps such as Spotify. <laughs> you do, you're right there. Uh, yeah. Spot <laughs> you're not fiddling about. Uh, such as uh, Spotify or Amazon Music for the functions including navigation and media streaming. The aim is to offer a, a suite of online services mm -hmm. without the need of a smartphone to be connected. Hmm. The system can be controlled via touchscreen or voice control, uh, with the latter powered by Google's assistant system that op also operates on devices such as smartphones and smart speakers. Volvo's software boss, Olgard Anderson, who was, of course, the fifth member of ABBA, uh, said the new <laughs> system offers a radical improvement. <laughs> Take a chance of this system. Uh, a radical improvement uh, and has voice control software well above anything that's in any car right now. Uh, it will constantly be monitoring your location via GPS. Do you know, he's, um, uh, Ogard sounds like he comes from Enfield. He doesn't sound like he comes from... Uh... <laughs> the <laughs> goal improvement his other job is in the Karachi fried chicken uh, oh, okay. nearby, right. <laughs> so they want yeah they yeah. want to replace their system they want to create their own thing uh, using Android based iOSs which is good in some ways because you can mm -hmm. get your own music through Spotify and download your own bits and pieces but what is going on what the it's car's a, becoming an extension a, of a phone. phone. Isn't it? It's going to be another phone bill, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because I think, is, is it the Vauxhall Adam, the most stupidly named car? Nice. Uh, that does, that does Wi Fi and internet or something like that, I, I hear on the adverts they have. So, well, that's great, but you're going to have to pay a monthly subscription for the use of Wi Fi for data. Yeah. For a car, there's another bill that you really don't want. Well, I don't want. I've got one phone. It got. Uh, although I did, as you were talking, we've missed a piece of news this week because it only really broke yesterday, uh, and I'd already written the script. So tough. Um, <laughs> um, uh, the government are tabling plans to make it seriously illegal for you even to touch your phone in the car. Mm. So at the moment, the UK law is. You can make calls, but your phone has to be in a, a cradle. Mine's in a cradle. Wow. I, I listen to I listen to it wirelessly. I sometimes listen to it wired in. I make phone calls in the car, but it sits in a cradle. That's right. legal. Taking the phone with no headset and putting it up to your ear is illegal. Yep. Now, this will key into what the government is saying. If they're going to make it illegal to touch your phone in a car, that's fr frightening. I because I'm I use a lot. I mean, I use the Waze app all the time yeah. to, to get around because it's a nice little backup to my sat nav because it'll go. It's busy down this road. Take a left here, and it will take me down some little weird high street to avoid a load of traffic. Um, but how is that policeable? Because you could say, well, hold a minute. If it's not your phone you're touching, you're touching your radio, that's the same thing, effectively. In or some your ways. nose. Yeah, I yeah. don't know how it's... Um, they, the newspaper article I read highlighted um, use of cameras. So the extended use of... Um, <sighs> Um, uh, was traffic cameras they'll be on all the time monitoring whether you're in your car and you go across and grab your phone or scratch your nose speaking of and which night did post four actually did happen yes <laughs> Uh, we did post something on uh, the Facebook group, which will give you all the details later on um, about the cameras that are on the M25 yes now everywhere I, I've yeah. really noticed it in the last I've been doing some work around the M25 and I've suddenly now started noticing them. So when you see the symbol for cameras on the M25 and you see that the, the overhead gantries get mm. your speed down, get below the speed limit because there are cameras on there and you will get fined. It's really naughty because you can hardly see them. So the tradition in the UK being uh, for listeners outside the UK, you see Australia will go, what do you mean? In Australia, <laughs> cameras are hidden. So uh, I've, I hired a big old uh, Holden in Australia to go down to the south coast. Huge thing. Auto with like a three litre engine. It was fantastic. Uh, I think the Commodore or whatever the mm. modern equivalent of the Commodore is. 
Um, and my brother's going, keep the speed limit down, keep the speed limit down. I was like, why? He went, we're going to get flashed. And I was like, but there's, no, I'll see the cameras. No, 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 they hide them in Australia. <laughs> Over here, it was, it, it has been illegal to hide them and you have to yeah. have cameras, the, 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 the Gatso cameras painted bright yellow. Those ones are painted yellow, but they're cunningly hidden. And I, mm. I, I only managed to get that, uh, my passenger only managed to get that shot because um, uh, we were in a traffic jam under one of the gantries. Oh, okay. Mm. We'll, we'll take that. So, yes, beware. Um, I'm confused about Volvo. Yes. Volvo's brand was based on reliability, reliability, reliability. And I have friends that had old 240s from the 80s and 90s that never broke down. But they're boxy, Boric, but they're good. Boxy, but good. <laughs> but that, and that's what you relied on. Now, <laughs> Volvos are now currently being made in China. What are they saying? They're going to start making electric cars and only electric yeah. cars soon. Absolutely. Um, I... I, I Okay, it just doesn't. It just seems to be very off-brand. I don't see why you would want to own a Volvo anymore. Moving it, away from the values of what Volvo's. Yeah, always Volvo's all about a reliable car. That good God, if it works in the north of, of of Sweden and Norway, this thing will work in, you know, Wisconsin in a winter or Sao Paulo in a summer. Tooting or tooting. <laughs> or actually, let's get it right. Was it Stamford Hill? That's where the gold was yes. green. Yeah, that's where the Volvos are. Um, it's not racist, it's just true. Jewish it's people in England yes. love, love, love a Volvo. Um, I don't know whether they do in America as much. I'm not sure. Jewish people, uh, traditional Jewish people, Orthodox Jews are always seen in a good old Volvo. Mm. Not, not sure they will be really into Spotify. Okay, uh, <laughs> moving on. And uh, in, in your talking a lot of balls news, the rise of electric vehicles threatens the car industry as we know it. That's according to the PSA group Electric. Uh, and connected boss Helen Lees. She says EVs are far simpler, need less parts, less time in the workshop. Ultimately, it means less time in after sales. That's why we've chosen to diversify into areas such as shared mobility. PSA, which owns Peugeot, Citroën, uh, DS, Opel and Vauxhall, or I didn't realise that, uh, mm. operate a free-to-move car sharing service in Paris where 550 of its vehicles are available via s- smartphone. I'm not sure how that works. I'm guessing you find where the car is, you jump in it, and uh, you drive it to where you go, need to go, and then somebody else, like a like a rent, the bicycle rental, like a forest bike, forest bike thing that we've got in London, and I think they're all over the globe now. Uh, talking this week at the Auto Futures event, uh, Helen Lee said uh, we haven't commercialised a lot of mobility services in the UK, but we will do. Um, also, our use of uh, telematics and technology to enable peer-to-peer car sharing on our new vehicles. You can get a digital key so you can assign the cars to others remotely. Great. Uh, Lee's added that despite the <laughs> inevitable decline in after sales revenue in the short term, the increased sales of EVs does bring opportunity. Whereas a lot of consumers might service their petrol or diesel cars themselves. Here we go. They tend to come back <laughs> to the main service dealership for electric vehicles because the aftermarket operators aren't necessarily ready to the same extent as manufacturers are. And, and believe me, they will never be allowed to be ready. I think yeah. this is what they're doing, as we're finding out with Tesla. Mm. Uh, We've got a short-term opportunity for after sales, she says, where hopefully we can build loyalty and prove ourselves and break some of the myths about being ripped off by mainstream manufacturers. That's not a myth. She is being refreshingly honest. Electric vehicles will have to be worked on by main dealers like Tesla. They can charge what they like. Great future for electric cars. And also, I'm not sharing a car with anyone. Bugger (laughs) that. Have you seen what the state of a rental car looks like? Awful. (laughs) I don't think I've ever been in a beach holiday and, <laughs> and got into a beach rental car and found that there's more sand in the rental car than actually on mm. the beach. Sweaty seats. Oh. The thing has never been cleaned. Um, Disgusting. Uh, absolutely foul things. I'm not sharing a car. Um, uh, yeah, well, maybe that is the future. Is that their version of like the car club things? I think so, you, yeah. That that's what, I think so, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind renting one for a bit. That's fine, but I'm not sharing my. <laughs> Sorry, some random people. <laughs> I've seen, I, I've seen the way my mother parks a car, you know, <laughs> ramming it into the curb. Yes, that's that's. I'm glad I got her a car with completely mint alloy wheels. But that's another issue. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Uh, should we do some in bug me? That's fast car news. Yes. 
following on from last week's Carboys news, uh, Bloodhound, who are the land speed record car building uh, group, who are set, uh, set a new supersonic record of 800 miles an hour in South Africa next year while they're planning to. Uh, but it's uh, been shown in new videos detailing its test run. Uh, it's the first time that the Brit car, which was rescued from administrators earlier this year, has been filmed moving under its own power at speed. Uh, although the car only hits 100 miles an hour in the tests, that's that's rubbish. My car does faster on the yeah. uh, test track. Uh, it's uh, a milestone for the team, while the speed can be cranked up in the coming days oh, okay. to test new parameters. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, I like to think that they've just got one dial where they can adjust the speed. <laughs> Do you think they're gonna have... That would have been an amazing speedo. <laughs> it must have been... Well, with the thing is we could go faster, but the speedo weighs so much because it's so large because it has mm. to go from zero to 900 miles an hour. <laughs> the long-term promised shakedown is taking place on a specially prepared 20-kilometer track at the uh, Haxin Pan in the Kalahari Desert near the uh, Namibian border. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. D- to test the installation of its Rolls Royce EJ200, which, if you didn't know, comes out of a Eurofighter. Yes, uh, it's a gas turbine engine with uh, afterburners, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. Uh, the car was uh, late last month. No, but it's uh, a car show. It's not a plane show. But I know. Uh, uh, the car was late last month, successfully given a dry crank uh, mm. excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the Gloucestershire HQ, uh, which involved having the exhaust output of a smaller jet engine blown into its intake. <laughs> Why does this sound so rude? Uh, to rotate the moving parts of the main motor. <laughs> uh, oh. uh, Bloodhound. Yeah, <laughs> I like a good uh, engine blown into yeah. its intake. Um, Bloodhound uh, will be driven. Oh, fantastic. It'll be driven by the former RAF uh, jet pilot and current world record uh, holder, which is Wing Commander Andy Green. No relation. Wow. Uh, I... Who, <laughs> who back in 1997, if you didn't know, became the only person ever to drive a car at supersonic speed on land when he took the thrust SSC uh, to the new mark of 763.035 miles an hour, to be precise. Uh, the team members believe they can achieve 800 miles, miles an hour as a first step. Mm. It's quite a brutal thing, isn't it? It's had a coat of paint since I first saw it. It was okay. blue originally. It's okay. now white with a, mm-hmm. a with a orange beak. Nice. Um, it looks pretty good. It looks like, again, I know this is a car show, not a plane show. If you know what a Lockheed F-105 Starfighter looks like, <sighs> which was just basically no, a... Really they don't. A, I know. <laughs> was it was an engine with uh, a few wings put on it. Okay. This is what, what this car is. It's just is, an engine. Is, is that a Vietnam era plane? Uh, yes, it would be okay. actually. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, I've seen those dropping napalm on third, poor <laughs> third world people in Cambodia. Yeah. Well, the, the cool thing about this, um, I did put a pic. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I think I put a picture and I put some VT on the um, Facebook page. Yes, the wheels are exposed at the side. They stop being wheels after about two hundred miles an hour, and mm. are more like they 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 don't they act as a, like an aerofoil. Uh, okay, because the front almost takes off. I mean, the, I yes. don't know whether the car is touching the ground at that speed. I'm not sure. Would it have mm. to officially? I would have thought so. Because it's the same thing. So technically, to be a car, it just has to have four wheels. So right. if you look at the back, it's got yeah. this like really big uh-huh. axle. Right. So this is like this is like the original, was it the, the blue... Blue Flame? Right? Blue Flame, which had a huge axle on the back with the two mm. wheels. So this is similar, not quite as big. Um have they worked out because obviously the the, the um, speed of um, on water I think is sealed at something like three hundred because obviously in the, was it late sixties late fifties Donald Campbell, Donald Campbell died, yeah. died up up in the Lake District um, and they just can't get it beyond that. Is there going to be a seal? Do you think with the the top speed? It's got to be at some point, hasn't it? There has to be because if you think of like shock waves and how that works, I, right. I think there's they're, they're here. If you take road cars for example, they've they've kind of hit a barrier as well. We've had mm. nothing really go beyond two hundred and what was it? The uh, Koenigsegg, I think, was two hundred and seventy okay. miles an hour. So we've we haven't actually really progressed. If you think that the Ferrari F forty back in the late eighties, early nineties, that was the first two hundred mile an hour car. We haven't really progressed, have we, in, in the last no. 20 years or so? No. No. Um, in a similar way that the, tra- the trains that go past uh, my house 
uh, running at the same speed as they did in Victorian times. So that's 150 years ago when they first built the railway. Um, <laughs> right, so we're moving on from fast car news to knee-jerk reaction by climate change alarmist <laughs> car news. Bristol City Council, a hater of uh, all things uh, vehicular, in the west of England is considering banning diesel cars from the centre part of the city in an effort to prove, improve uh, air quality. The local authority approves the proposed clean air zone. Bristol will become the first city in the UK to totally ban diesel vehicles. Under the proposal, diesel vehicles will be banned from entering a central section between 7am and 3pm every day. A second wider zone will affect commercial vehicles, including buses and taxis. These will not be barred, but owners will be charged if they enter the zone with vehicles which do not meet Euro 6 emission standards. So poor white van man won't be able to drop off supplies to shops and Jocasta won't be able to drop off Tarquin and Hermione at a private school. <laughs> Officials hope to launch a car scrapping scheme in, in her Land Rover, Range Rover, yeah, uh, or BMW <laughs> X5. But officials also hope to launch a car scrappage scheme which would help people buy new electric cars. Mm, good idea, but like so many, it's flawed. Flawed because Bristol has absolutely no public transport. It has yeah. the worst public transport in the world. There are no trams. There are no the train service is terrible. The terrible bus service, which is hourly. Um, so how are people going to get around? It's like a stick without the carrot. <laughs> Um, I can't tell. I've, I, the centre of Bristol is an absolute hole. It is. It is. It should be a really pretty city centre, and mm. it's a dots hole. It's a, very, full of homeless, full of drunken people. You do not want to go out into the centre of Bristol on a Saturday night after about seven o'clock. It is rough. All the wow. shops are closing down. The, the outskirts of Bristol, lots of money going in. Bristol's an expensive place to live. Um, if you're listening from outside the UK, Bristol uh, used to be a seaport. Um, it was massive in the massive commercial centre in the uh, probably 18th century, and then into mm. the 19th and 20th, it was less and less important. But the last sort of 30 years, it's become quite a big centre of media. All of the uh, planet programmes that you watch, Planet yeah. Earth. David Attenborough are all made in Bristol. Um, I think Van Morrison lives in Bristol. Really? Yeah, I keep, I've seen him a couple of times in Bristol and Bath. Shouting, oh, okay. it, rolls it. Um, <laughs> was he on the bright side of the road? He was, he was. <laughs> hey. I said, is that your wife with you? And he went, yeah. She's, How do you spell her name? He went, G-L-O. <laughs> G-L-O. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, it's a completely it's a completely uh, flawed um, uh, idea. Uh, yeah, the, the, I, I, so Bristol actually has improved now. You can never get a taxi in Bristol because you'd be in the pub in the centre of Bristol, thinking, "I need to go home. I'm tired." Some of my family live there. Yeah, so I'll get a, I'll get a taxi. Your phone is for a taxi. Go. Well, we don't know. We, we might well not might not be able to get you one. <laughs> Whereas now Uber exists everywhere in the UK, and the last time I was in Bristol, I must have used Uber about thirty times. Go to here, go to here, go to here. Now, if you're going to ban diesel cars, does that mean you're going to ban ban Uber? Yeah, it's it's really really poor. Okay, there's no tram service. The buses are really infrequent. Loads of pe loads of people. I say people, and I use that term very loosely. Idiots on bicycles. Um, but if you don't want to get wet and you don't want to wear lycra. You don't want to get into work and then have to have another <laughs> effing shower mm. to get in a car because there is there is no public transport. Exactly. There we uh, go. Uh, if you listen to this around the world, our country is broken. Yes, it needs to be fixed. Yeah, we need we need maybe like to separate from Europe. We could do that sort of process. How do you think that would? Work? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good idea. That might work. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. Should we move on? Should we do uh should we do classic cars? That's classic car time. Fantastic. Uh later on in the show we have got, of course, the letters coming up, the quiz coming up, uh, and lots more fun in the show. But classic car, if you've never heard this um feature on the show before, uh classic car is where we if you're looking for something for the weekend, sir, uh we can take you take a car from the past. Um oh, condoms. <laughs> no, a car. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, which you can pick up for not too hefty a price tag that will still hold its head up high today in the motoring world that isn't a pig's ear to live with. You won't find overpriced six figure Italian supercars here no. at all. No. Uh, this week's ca classic car is a real British blue collar hero uh, oh. from an era when Ford 
which Rich says is fix often, fix often and repair, repair daily. daily. <laughs> That's a good uh, acronym for it. Uh, they were synonymous with producing sportier versions of their everyday runarounds. And this week we are going to talk about the Mark II Ford Fiesta XR2. Ooh. Um, which I used to love this car when I was little. Um, in August '83, still Ford... are. Go on, sorry. I know. <laughs> yes. uh, in August '83, uh, Ford. Uh, Reminds me. Let me tell you the story after when we finish the show. Okay. Uh, uh, in August '83, Ford replaced the original Mark One Bobcat Fiesta, which was the tiny Fiesta with the more rounded facelift body shell. Yes. Uh, now, this was a time when. The Fiesta's contemporaries would have been the Peugeot 205 GTI, mm-hmm. uh, the MG Metro, and the Fiesta XR2 went on sale for £5,731 when it was mm. launched in 1984. Um, incidentally, if you didn't know, the XR name comes from the fact that Ford used to brand their higher spec models with the letter X. So those ah. of you old enough to remember, you can think back to the Cortina GXLs or the Granada Gear X. Yes. That's what the X was for. Ah. Uh, and the R was for racing. Oh, the not X- rally. Okay. No. <laughs> all right, all right. The XR2 features the same HGMI or the Hemi head, the 1600 CVH engine from the XR3, and was fitted with Weber carbs, which by today's standards was pretty measly. It produced 96 bhp, uh, yes. it had a claimed top speed of 109 miles an hour and a 0 to 60 times of nine seconds. The spec was also pretty sparse. Uh, it had six times 13 steel alloy wheels. Um, but then you could also order the option, which was the now iconic pepper pot alloy wheels. Yes, I'm Fiesta. looking at those now. Oh, they, they were cool. good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what you did get for your money was a few minor cosmetic state, uh, changes, uh, which were differed slightly from the gear model. It had a tiny, tinny stereo, black plastic body kit that, had, uh, that basically flared the wheel arches and seals, black plastic three-piece spoiler, I've never seen a spoiler quite like this. It's a spoiler that goes all around the, around the boot lid. Um, I remember it, yes. <laughs> and a set of round spotlights at the front. It drove really well, though, uh, with excellent handling. Um, you will get to experience old boys body old school boy uh racer body roll mm. in this one mm. car uh they be prepared the brakes were not the greatest uh so you can expect no abs no power steering here at all whatsoever I'm thinking pads at the front and drums at the back absolutely yeah. yeah uh the story of the xr2 uh will be one of constantly evolving which um with lots of mechanical revisions under the skin it basically makes restoring one or um, a model like one, very, very, very difficult uh, if you so wish to buy a Mark II as a little runaround or produce a replica. Uh, By the end of the production in 1989, the XR2 was on sale for £8,430, which if you worked out today in today's money, Mm. that equates to around £20,000. That's not bad. It's not bad when you consider that for that sort of money these days, you can buy the uh, high-spec modern day successor to the xr which is the fiesta st for about the same sort of price okay makes Mm. total sense uh so what do you look for uh these cars um only came in a selection of colors they only came in white silver blue and red and optional black um the early cars they did replace the blues and the red so uh if you had a xr2 early on it would be in sunburst red and then they changed it to russo red okay do yes. like the Rosso Red. I have um, a Rosso Red Fiesta, yeah. Well, mechanically, it was really simple. Therefore, the main enemy, of course, as with all Fords, rust. is rust. Rust. <laughs> the good news is, though, the XR2 has often been overlooked in recent years as a classic. Uh, so you can easily find examples for around £2,000. However, if you mm-hmm. wanted something better, yes. uh, I found one today, uh, a good example of an XR2, cool. which was finished in white, had 105,000 miles on the clock in Staffordshire, and you yeah. can pick one up for £6,450. So not a bad investment at all. Indeed, and a good, nice little classic car. I am currently looking at one on eBay. Yeah. An 88, so that would have been the last of the old shape, mm. F, a 1.6 XR2, three-door, 74,000 miles, pepper pot wheels. Ooh. It's in the mercury grey with the red stripe. Yes. Uh, with the spotlights on the with the Lucas spotlights on the front. Twelve thousand nine hundred and ninety five. That's a very nice car, but a very that's very expensive. expensive car. I don't think that's gonna sell at that price. No. 
That's what I said. The one, the one that I saw for six and a half mm-hmm. um, also had, I don't know if you remember these, uh, the XR3 did them as well. The rear window had red stripes in the window with XR2 on the back. Yes. <laughs> and this is my friend had one of these and that's what he had in his back window. It, it was the 80s. We had a lot, yes. of, a lot of things were called laser and we had a lot of <laughs> turbo, even if you didn't have a, I think even, even you could buy a turbo hairbrush and a turbo razor. <laughs> Uh, there were lots of red lines on things. Red yes. lines on everything. Red lines on, on, on golf. GTIs had a lot of red lines. Yeah, they did. Good <laughs> classic car, though. Nice little I do. car. I do love the little uh, features. Uh, the, the rust was a problem. I had a 1990 XR3i uh, 1.6, mm. uh, which was the Escort, the big brother to the Fiesta. Um, it were, And I sold it with 105,000 miles on the clock. There was rust everywhere. Mm. Everywhere. Every Real arches man. were always a problem. They were uh, always right. Yeah, and I'm I would I would religiously clean out the wheel arches with a hose and I would religiously I took I kept getting uh, water in the um the, the footwell of the passenger seat. I thought there was yeah. a leak in the sunroof and I took the battery out and you could almost put your hand through it. <laughs> so we had to, I'd rather than weld it up, just went and put a lot of plastic padding, put the battery back and sold mm. the car. Um there was rust under the uh, passenger side as well, I think. Um, somebody <laughs> jacked the car up incorrectly. That had all rusted. I had to have that re-welded. Someone uh, looked at it and it started If you're going to buy one of these, my suggestion would be get a torch and get and be very dubious about anybody who's uh, uh, undersealed it as well. Yes. Because that can hire a myriad out of problems. I was going to be spending a six grand on a car. I would say, I want to test drive it. I would drive it around to someone that's got a pit. And I would get mm. underneath the car with a screwdriver, and go, ja, ja, ja. Um, and a magnet. If you can get a magnet to make sure you've got you're hitting metal and not plastic padding. Mm. And I'd <laughs> rather be rubbing a magnet all over those wheel arches because you were talking about the flared plastic wheel arches. Yeah, they hid all the rust. <laughs> so they were just they were just um, uh, they were like. Um, not bolted on um was it? Think... they were riveted on but the rust ju- they held the water it was like great so this just ho- so rather than have it clean you can see where it's going rusty they just hid the rust so i'd want to look under there someone as well. once told me the reason for that was the full mm-hmm. technique for doing wheel arches was i mm-hmm. think they were spot welded oh. so what happened was okay the rain and the mud and all that got between the actual welds which then made it rust from the inside. And that's Brilliant. why the wheel arches kept falling apart. Brilliant. Absolute <laughs> genius. I mean, seriously, it, you know, nice looking car, but I, I'd try and get the best example you can. Yes. Probably not £13,000 on one, but... Um, Six and a half will get you a decent one. Yeah, that's good. That's a uh, very nice little, um, yeah, nice little... I thought I'd probably want a more expensive car reviews. Right. Shall we have um, a little bit of Lost Highways? Ooh, and yet again, I'm looking forward we, to the music. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Sergio Leone. There we go. A bit of Lost Highways music. This is our feature where e- listeners email in and give us their favourite roads and the reason why they love them. Um, you can email the show. You can get to us uh, directly. Very, very simply. It's car-boys, boys with a Z, at outlook.com. Car-boys with a Z at outlook.com. Facebook, we're car-boys, boys with a Z, at car-boys, four Zs. Twitter, car-boys, at car underscore boys so get in touch antonia from belgium says her little nation has some great driving roads in particular the castle run tucked away in the southwest corner of the nation you'll find the chateau de billon uh it rests at nice. the end of the Semois valley in an idyllic setting uh surrounded by lush green countryside though short the journey from Rubois jean along the river valley to the castle is spectacular offering iconic vistas of the countryside the river and beautiful examples of belgian architecture including abbe 
the Corps de Moi. Star heading southwest towards Bohan. Enjoy the panoramic views of the river and continue eastward on the N935 switch and twist your way along the border until you pick up the N810 eastbound into the walled city of Wuyon. She says, stay a while in her country and enjoy the cuisine and, of course, the chocolates and, of course, most importantly of all, the beer. Yes. So it sounds like a good little, um, and it's also the French bit of uh, Belgium, because Belgium has the Flamands to the north, mm. uh, who are more likely to appreciate if you speak Flamand, which nobody does. Uh, <laughs> the French to the south. The trouble mm. is in Belgium, I speak bad Flamand and all right French, and they just respond in English, obviously. <laughs> both are pretty bad. <laughs> but, uh, well done, by the way. There's lots of lots of hard uh, places to. Yeah, well, it's only because my wife speaks fluent French, isn't it? So. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack from Tennessee. Uh, do you think Jack from Tennessee? Jack, Mr. Is this Mr. Daniels? I, I hope know. so. We need uh, a sponsor, Mr. Daniels, and we will take <laughs> we will take sponsorship in in uh, in kind in product as opposed to <laughs> exactly money. <laughs> Uh, he emails in uh, and wants to recommend a road he only discovered last year in the Tennessee River Gorge or the uh, Chantanooga Loop. Chantanooga Loop? Ch- Chatta- Ch- no, Chattanooga. Chattanooga. It is uh, stunning all year round, although some cherish it it's, uh, most as a winter drive. Mm, the Ch- Chattanooga Loop portion of the Tennessee River Gorge is 126 miles uh, long, and the drive through the single mountain to the north and the Lookout Mountain to the south. Uh, Lookout Mountain forms the backdrop to Chattanooga, a city named uh, from the Indian word for mountain. Uh, Nice. Chattanooga. 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 Uh, Drivers can stop at any point along the road to find scenic views, historic buildings, and uh, hiking, biking, and fishing opportunities. We do Mm. like fishing opportunities. Um, While some of the roads are a bit more edged of your seat driving, the Chattanooga Loop is great for families uh, looking to relax. He says, if you stop off, uh, you can always enjoy the local bourbon uh, or two or three. Excellent. Case, four or five or six. Twenty. <laughs> Mr. Daniels, we would like some sponsorship. Any other bourbon companies, we were happy happy to promote your, your product as well. Um, so Chattanooga means mountain in uh, the local um, First Nations yes. people or, or Native American people of uh, that area. Do you, know, do you like the story about the, uh, the, the story I heard? And I don't know whether it's true. I do hope it's true. That the kangaroo doesn't mean, can, isn't the word for kangaroo uh, in the, in, um, in Aborigine. So okay. the story was that the, the, the English or the Dutch landed and they found a local and they said, good grief, that's a strange looking uh, deer over there. It's, and it's sort of jumping around. And, and, and they said, what's that? And the local said, it's a kangaroo. Uh, but I think they just went kangaroo. And he said, oh, obviously it's called kangaroo. And I think kangaroo actually means, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> No, so the guys pointed their kangaroo and the locals go, what do you mean? What's the, I don't know. What are you talking about? So, yeah, kangaroo, I think, means what do you mean? I've got to look that one up. Yeah. Um, okay, so lost. Yeah, so if you would like to suggest a lost highway, a great driving road, email the show. Email carboys at car-boys at outlook.com. Car-boys, boys with a Z, at outlook.com. Um and Rob, I better guess. Oh, I've, I've been. I've. Uh, we don't, uh, but we've got some some correspondence news. Have I missed out? Ooh. I've I've missed missed out. Where do we play the jazz? That's in the classic car news. Oh, yeah. damn! I've missed out. Do you know? Should I just play it now? Yes. Okay. Okay. I know. Yeah. We'll just. Well, imagine we're still doing the classic car news because I forgot to 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 cue this one up. Here we go. This is. Here we go. Do some heroin. Thank you, Dizzy Gillespie. <laughs> Royalty free jazz. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the correspondence. That should have been for the classic car. And it's oh, he's back again. Here we go. <laughs> Can't get enough of him. All right. So it's filterless cigarettes and his heroin. Thank you very much for that. Um, 
Uh, yes, uh, uh, letters. Take a look at the user correspondence in this week. Cowboys post sack yet again, bulging with mail. First off, Sam the Sham from Doncaster wants to know what is cheap and yet fast sports car to own, to buy, and to run. He says he's only got two thousand pounds, but he wants something fast and he wants it not to break down. Okay, um, Japanese. Got to be Japanese. Uh, yes. uh, two thousand pound old Honda Civic Type R, not the. So not the, oh, yeah. Yeah. the last generation, the sort of bubbly looking one. Yeah, um, I know the one. Maybe a very old Nissan Z. Honda Accord, the last generation type R. They only made a few, and I'm not sure. It actually might have to go for the generation before the generation at 2000. Um, old Subaru Impreza, maybe 15-year-old Subaru. And they're quite cheap. Um, um, not very reliable. If, That's the only problem. If we're talking Hondas, what about the, was it the Integra? Also Ooh, had yeah. the VTEC engine. That's, yes. That's quite sporty. Coupe. I'm not sure how much those are there at the moment. Uh, no. 2,000 pounds is a weird one, isn't it? Because you're almost at the bottom, scraping the bottom of the barrel. But uh, I would, he's got to go for Japanese. Or the oh, uh, Hyundai Coupe. He will get a oh, big okay. engine Hyundai Coupe. Probably not that old. They did. A, was it a 2.9 version or something 2. like 9 that? 2.9 with um, the automatic gearbox. Uh, I've driven that. It's quite, it's quite a nice little drive. And if you um, squint, it looks like a Ferrari. Yeah, you really have to squint, though. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you shouldn't be driving if you think it looks like a Ferrari. <laughs> you should be physically banned from the road. Mm. Where's our uh, suggestions? Yes. Uh, next way, have an email from the Joker 156. Uh, is that because he drives an Alpha 156? Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, uh, he says he loves the show, but wants to know what's the classiest vehicle uh, you've owned or driven. Uh, also, what is the classiest car you'd buy right now? Oh, interesting one. Classiest vehicle. I don't think I've ever driven a classiest vehicle. Uh, I would say my Mini Cooper currently is a, is a classy vehicle. I think it probably is. I, I, I was going to say my old uh, BMW M Sport was probably the, the classiest yeah. vehicle I've ever had. And it was immaculate. But also the most nightmare vehicle you've ever oh, had. Oh, it's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Everything made by BMW is crap now. It's all forced yeah. to bits. And it just costs a fortune to run. Mm. So the gone of the myth, the, the golden days of amazing German engineering. Everything on that car just broke from the, from the alloy wheel. The 19-inch wheels <laughs> cracked. And were a £1,000 each to replace. Whoa. Yeah, I, yeah. well, that's uh, mm. well, another story about selling that without repairing them properly. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, what, would, what would be the classiest car you would buy right now? I think it's a difficult one because we're in the age of EVs. And yeah. Big, fat, huge gas guzzlers uh, aren't seen. Uh, I, think the, I think a Rolls Royce... I, t- I tell you what, this, this, this comes to mind. I passed, I uh, got overtaken by a... Bentley Coupe uh, okay. the other day, and I just thought, oh, footballer. It was an old guy driving, yeah. but I just yeah. thought, mate, if you're going to buy a Bentley, you need to buy the Flying Spur four door. Mm. You cannot buy the Coupe. The, co- the Coupe is for footballers. Um, and they're cheap. You can buy a Coupe now for like well under 20 grand. Uh, okay. You don't buy the Coupe. No, 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 no. It looks like it's for football players. I, I think, uh, yeah, that the. I think a nice Bentley, Ford or Bentley, or everybody hates it. I love the VW Phaeton. I think that's an amazing car. Okay. Mm. But apparently, if it goes wrong, it can be a catastrophic bill. There's something Ooh. with the um, uh, the suspension on the corner, the struts or something. There's some issue. Yeah. And when it goes, that's why you do see VW Phaetons for under 20 grand. Ah, uh, okay. It's like five to six grand fix if something happens to the corners because it's the same engine as the it's the same engine as the rolls royce the vw fatal yes it is yeah 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 it would be yeah same company yeah because they just they just didn't they they weld together two v6s no hang on that's that is right i think you are right yeah to make a v12 or weld together two v or is it a w12 or something w12 that's it yeah yeah w12 yeah (laughs) <laughs> yes, that's oh, oh, an interesting car. Yeah. What about what about uh, the classiest vehicle you think at the moment? Oh, at the moment, I don't know. I don't. I'm finding cars a bit soulless, so I'm, mm. I wouldn't say anything now. If I, if it was my own money, mm. I would go for something a bit older. I would go for an older, not not the current one, but the one before it, the uh, Jaguar XJ. Oh, 
because I love those. Oh, yeah. Proper gangster cars. Yes, nice. Uh, nice looking car. Um, and yeah, I, th- I think they're better looking than the ones that the Jag XJs that mm. you have now. Yeah. But yeah, I'd go with that if that was my yeah, own. That's money. a nice looking car. Uh, Richie, 24 7 from Gainesville, Florida, relocating to Los Angeles for work. Wants a car to drive across country. What will get him there reliably? Well, as we mentioned earlier, any Japanese, Japanese box with wheels yeah. will do. Honda, Toyota. In the US, ah, in the US, he doesn't give us a, a, a budget, but budget. they do a 3.5 litre Accord Coupe in Ooh. America, which is a beautiful looking car. Uh, if you're low on budget, older Lexus, older Hyundai, um, or you could go full yank. What about a <laughs> platform vehicle, maybe an old police car, Crown Vic? Pretend mm. you're in the Blues Brothers. We've got a full tank of gasoline, <laughs> half a pack of cigarettes. It's night time and we're both wearing yeah, sunglasses. sunglasses. Yeah. Or an old granddad car, Buick Park Ultra. Yeah, I think what they need is, uh, if he's going across the country, um, big, lazy, lazy car that's comfortable. Yes, that yes. really. you can sleep in the back if needs be. Mm. Pull over actually, Crown, Crown Victoria is quite a good idea, actually. Yeah. Yeah, just something that's, blah, 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 blah. you know, you, you can't rev the nuts off those things and it won't blow up. Mm. That's your reliable. Yeah. And the other thing, I mean, we are going about Japanese cars. Um, I don't know about the, uh, I always think when, you know, when in Rome, um, because if you're over here, you're going to get parts for cars. Mm. No problem. I'm not sure about America and I'm not sure, I, I'm probably you would be all right for Honda, but if you drive something like an old Crown Vic, and you're going across country. If you break down in some little town, the likelihood is they've got the parts in your yeah. carriage. So yeah, try not to stay away from anything too uh, uh, exotic. exotic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, Julie in Saffron Morden, nice part of the world. Nice. Uh, wants wants to buy her daughter a cheap car to go to university in. Uh, she's off to Exeter Uni. Good luck. Uh, it must be reliable, cheap, and safe. Uh, not too much there then. Mm. Okay, um, we're sticking Reliable. with ja- Japanese or Korean, isn't it? <laughs> well, I was going to go utilitarian. I was going to say cheap uh, Ford car, which has like wind down windows. Ah, nothing. yes. Anything that... last, not current generation, but the like first the, generation. Yeah, first generation that always rusted around the rear filler cap. Rear filler cap and the wiper as well. Oh, uh, right. Okay. So those are two spots. So we could give you some good advice here. You're going to get, yeah, you're going to get a, a grand car for one of those. Easy. Yeah. Um, if you get an old one that's been looked after. I always think look for a Church of England sticker on a car or a National <laughs> Trust. I always mm. used to buy a National Trust sticker or try and get something to stick down the car. It looks like it's been driven by a vicar there. Oh, <laughs> car. Oh, no, never talk above 70. No, 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 no. Never done donuts in the uh, car park of B&Q. Um, uh, yes, I would say uh, I'd go personally a Japanese or Korean, uh, maybe a key car. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one litre Suzuki Alto is a good little car. Toyota Igo, good little car. Uh, if you want really cheap, and it's actually getting harder to find these, Projua Kanchil or the Nipper from <laughs> Malaysia. 660cc yes. Daihatsu... Um, engine. Lots of these were driven by uh, people who remember World War II. <laughs> um, you will find any of the Produas, the, the older Produas, probably three, four hundred quid yeah. with maybe four thousand miles on the clock. And I've dr- I've driven I've driven Produa in Malaysia. They're fine. They're fine. I, it's, it's... I would say though, is, is, uh, would you have to invest in a pair of earplugs going down the motorway from Saffron Morden to Exeter? Well, shall you tell? I'll tell you about the. Um, Perodua I once uh, owned that <laughs> had this is genius a stereo with an earphone jack <laughs> so you would plug your earphone <laughs> the little two mil jack into directly into the stereo so the rest of your uh, 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 party could didn't have to hear your music Fantastic. and it would drown the sound yes you would there is very little sound deadening uh, 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 equipment there you want to buy your daughter the cheapest car and the slowest car. That's yeah. what I would suggest, having children of my own, because she's not going to be able to drive very well at all if she's 18, 19. I don't care mm. how much she thinks she can. And that's not a bad little rundown to Exeter. From Saffron Walden, it's a little bit of a pig. But once you get past London, mm. the... It's I plain think, sailing, isn't it? Is it the 308? It's a dual carriageway that takes you all the way there. And it's it gets busy that's in the summer. The you go past Stonehenge. There's a pinch point yeah. in Stonehenge. It goes down to one lane. Um, 
that's it's a nice little drive so she's going to be fine but yeah just just look around you want the car you want the newest car with the lowest mileage and you want it would be great if you can find something of somebody who's possibly just shuffled off small i was gonna say look at it this way one by the time you finish university you would have three years no claims bonus yeah all being well good. and at the same time you want a car that you don't mind ferrying your mates around university if they're going to be sick in the back and you're the yeah. designated driver yeah so. they can they can all smoke <laughs> weed in the back of it in the university <laughs> car park just a suggestion no what i would say what i would say is get one of those black boxes as well uh with your insurance. yes so it's helped out my niece's boyfriend who just learned to drive. She's just gone to university down in London, so she doesn't need a, a car. Um, mm. He wanted to learn to drive, and they put the black box in the car, and it'll monitor your speeding. So yeah. uh, it sends, so it makes sure, oh, you're in a 30-mile-an-hour area. Make sure you're doing 30 miles an hour. You're in mm. doing on a motorway. So make sure you're not going above 70. It does bring your insurance down, and it gives you a better rating as a younger driver in the UK. So a bit of a suggestion there. Mm. Uh, uh, I was going to say finally, but I've added another – or I did have printed the wrong one off. Um, no, <laughs> I – have I – no, this is the finally. Yes, this is it. Joey in Marbella writes in. He said it was Halloween on Thursday. Of course it, it was. was. Yeah. Um, and he celebrated um, in his local bar. Big style, he says. So I dread <laughs> think what he got up to. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he 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 said, um, "What is the uh, most scary car you've ever both owned?" <laughs> right, well, I'm making the most of this music. We're not going to be able to use it for another year. <laughs> I'll be playing the Monster Mash. Yes. Yeah next um yeah the most scariest car you've both ever owned um uh, most scary in terms of safety i think was possibly the trabant that we both drove in berlin last <laughs> yes <time. laughs> that was very 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 frightening oh um, dear that was the most fright yeah pretty uh, the darkest yeah. car i've ever seen and like i would say the most intimidating car was my dad had a 1987 and i confirmed this this week with him yeah, i haven't imagined this jet black gls sierra no one had a black car in England in 1987. Oh, okay. It was as rare as hen's teeth. They didn't do black cars. Hmm. He looked like a drug dealer in it. It was hilarious. Half blacked out <laughs> windows, full factory uh, body kit. Included. Yes, I know one. Yeah. And it was a weird black. It didn't look black, black. Like cars now look really black. It almost looked slightly blue. I, I can't explain. Um, and I think he had a, like a red decal. It was the 80s down, yes. down the side. But that car looked really menacing. No, but you just didn't get black cars. Because if you grew up in the 50s in England, um, he used to say to me, you could only get a car in black. Mm. And you had it was slowly, slowly more and more colours coming in. in the 80s. Everybody had a coloured car. Now in England, um, and I guess the same as in America and in Europe, everybody's got a black car, a grey car, a black car, a silver car, a grey car, yeah. a white car, a black car, a silver car. Nobody really goes in for the colours. And you know, yeah. if it's burgundy, the guy driving it is an old chap. Um, <laughs> You know, it's, it's a wine coloured. You know you're going to be, this guy's going to take a while to put the damn thing in gear if you're behind him. Um, but yeah, that was quite a scary, that was a scary looking car. Mm. No, I don't think I've ever, no, I've never had a scary car. No? No, no not at all, ever. Okay, okay. <laughs> not, not even safety wise. Mm, yeah. No, no. What was not... your first car? What did you first start driving? My, my first car, it's seriously no word of a lie, my first car was my sister's old Fiesta in uh, a bright blue colour with an electric full-length roof <laughs> and purple stripes on the side. <laughs> what year are we talking was the car from? The 92, it was a J-plate, J-92. Okay. So it was the, new, it was the, the, the third generation. Yes. Which good little cars. They were good, good fun. <laughs> Rusted around the wheel arches, though, I think, again, like, yeah. <laughs> right, are you ready for our quiz? I'm going to yes, get the music. Here we go. Quiz I love time this music. now. Dun, 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 dun. Welcome one, welcome all to our quiz of the week here on Carboys. This week, we're going to take a trip across time and space. A bit like Doctor Who, but with a smaller budget. Now, the quiz <laughs> this week is... The sale of the century. A look at cars that could go over 100 miles an hour. Or a century, as they say in uh, British cricket uh. terms. 
I'm playing the role of Quizmaster, and like Nicholas Parsons, the original host of Sale of the Century, live from Norwich and back in the 1970s, I'll be wearing a crust velvet suit and offering prizes, including an electric carving knife and a hostess trolley. <laughs> So the format of the quiz is, I'll be asking my lucky contestant which cars could go over 100 miles an hour and which couldn't. So the correct answers will be either over or under. Ooh. For example, I might say 955cc 1987 Citroen AX, and the right answer would be under. Thank you. Or 5 litre 2014 Ford Mustang, and the right answer would certainly be over. Well done. Now, joining me tonight all the way from North London, staying in a beautiful Airbnb overlooking the sewage works in Isleworth, is Simon Sujiwa. <laughs> hey. Welcome to the show. Now, now before we thank start, you, thank Simon, you, thank I've got to let uh, you know that your bendy bully is safe, but not your money. So we've emptied your bank account with the help of a Nigerian prince called Mandela Bongan. <laughs> But never mind that for now. So I'll give you the year of the car and the country of either the UK or the USA, and you'll give me the model you think it could be. No, I've done the wrong one. No, I'll say the year of the car, the make of the car, and you will say over or under. Are you ready? Over or under. Yes, over or under. Right, I'm ready for this. Begin. So first off, Ford Escort. 1.3 GT 1968. Could it go over... Did it only manage to go under 100 miles an hour? Ooh, that's a tricky one to start off with. Uh, 1.3 OHV engine. Uh, what is it? 1968, so Mark 1. Didn't weigh much, though. Uh, I'm going to go... No, I'm going to stay. play it safe and go under. You are correct. It can only manage 91 miles an hour as a top speed. Moving on uh, to the 1990s. 1994 Peugeot one. 06, 1.3 Raleigh. Oh, they again, they were like a, a little washing machine on wheels. Uh -huh. um, 1.3, but they were quite basic and they were usually white. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm guessing under, but with a tailwind over. <laughs> <laughs> If it was going downhill in neutral, uh, it could go oh. over. Don't know whether it could do it now. It left the factory being able to go over 118 miles an hour. Really? Mm. Wow. Allegedly. Uh, going downhill uh, in, in a fair wind. Uh, <laughs> number three, 2003 Master 2 with a 1.25 cc engine. 1.25, that was a Ford engine. Uh -huh. that, was, that was the engine. And if I'm not mistaken, that would have been probably top speed of about 108. So I'm going to go for over. Correct. But only just 101 miles an hour. Oh, OK. Two yeah. rides so far. Number four, 1974 Ford Capri Mark II manual gear port box, 1.6 cc engine. Mark Ooh. two Ford Capri seventy four. It's heyday. This is the one that uh, Dennis drove in Minder. Yes. Manual gearbox, one point six liter engine. I'm going to go for. Oh, that's a tricky one. I'm going to go for under. Uh uh. Afraid Ooh. not. Ha Sorry, no, you got it right. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Are we correct? Sorry. Hard to believe okay. that this car could only manage 97 miles an hour when it left the plant in Dagenham. That's <laughs> terrible. Okay, so you got that one correct. Okay, yeah, yeah. Number five, 2003 Fiat Doblo, 1.6, 16-valve petrol engine. Doblo? Do Doblo's a van, isn't it? Mm, well, it's like a people carrier thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah the Doblo. Yeah. Uh... It, looked like it, had, it looked like a fat bloke with about three chins and then yeah. a box jutting out. Ooh, but it's a modern car, so I'm mm -hmm. going to say over. You're doing well, mate. You're doing well. Ooh. Terrible looking people carrier, but it could manage over 100 miles an hour. Just though, 104. Oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, we're off to Malaysia now. Number six, 2011 Projua <laughs> Mivi 1.3 petrol. So that will be the Daihatsu engine. Uh, oh, a small little tiny car uh, built for the city. I'm going to say under. Oh, uh -uh. oh, just over, just over. Peppy Daihatsu engine, 104, just nice. the same as the Fiat. Uh, number seven, 1948 
Yes. Aston Martin two liter drop top convertible, also known as the DB1. Aston Martin, it's a sports car. I you, that's definitely going to be over. Surely it's going to be over. I'm afraid. Uh, uh, what? This was no James Bond vehicle. It was David Brown's first uh, yes. offering uh, with Aston Martin. Ninety three miles an hour was its oh top speed. Oh my word! Ninety forty eight. Uh, mm. I mean, that, that's still probably the fastest car on the road. I think an yeah. Austin Sam probably only managed about 50. So, yes, shocking. Wow. But, you know, that is shocking. He would have been shaken and stirred um, with that news. <laughs> 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 Number eight, uh, question eight. 1982 Triumph TR7, and, uh, two litre engine, manual and petrol. Come on. Uh, awful awful car. Look awful. like a lump of cheese. Wedge of cheese. But it's a two-liter engine, so you've two got to liter. say it's over, yeah. over hundred. Yeah, yeah. Skin of its teeth, though. Uh, this Coventry car was one of the last to roll off the production line, and it could only manage a tiny hundred and six miles per hour. Mm. So, right. uh, okay, we're going over to the Far East. Uh, Daihatsu Copen, two thousand and five key car, six hundred and sixty-five cc. Oh, 665 cc. I think my microwave probably goes faster than that. So exactly, uh, but it was a, it was a Copen, which was the sports. Mm. Oh, you tried to trip me last time. I'm going to say under. Mm. Uh-uh. Oh. Over just small and peppy, 106 miles an hour. Mm. Okay, here we go. Uh, 1996 Audi 1.6 cc, the A2. Audi A2, 1996 1.6. Uh, CC petrol. A2, A2, so that's not quite the A3, so it's slightly smaller petrol. One but uh, Over, I'd say over. over. Yeah, 114 miles an hour. Well done. Ding! Yay. Uh, no, question 11. 1977 Caterham Super 7 uh, with a 1.6 Escort Crossflow engine. So this was the... Uh, the success, Patrick Magoo, Patrick Magoo, it was style, yes, the wasn't successor it? to the Lotus 7 that was originally yeah. released in the uh, 1960s. And Patrick Magoo and drove away in, in the prisoner, Which, yes, I think so. Really made that made the image of that car, absolutely. Um, I would say it weighs less than me, so I'd say yes, over 100. The boys from Briley Hill could do over 115. Yay, oh, well done, ding, uh, 1972 BMW 1800. E8. Ooh, 70s though. It's the same look as the 2002, but yeah. smaller engine. Uh, I'm In that case, then I'm going to go under. Well, like Nana, Nana said in uh, 99 red <laughs> balloons, this could only do 99 miles an hour. <laughs> just under. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nine, that's just not good. 1983, Datsun Z, 280, ZX. Oh, I used to have a matchbox car of this. Um, 1983, Datsun, 280. Matchbox car, which I scraped off the front. It was black, scraped off the front and drew a red line, so it looked like the Knight Rider car. Nice. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, come on, it's a sports car. It must be over, over. 126 miles an hour. Uh, just a couple left. Uh, yes. We're off to the States now. 1981 Jeep Wagoneer. 2.4 petrol engine, 1981 Jeep Wagoneer. And as we mentioned last week, this was the one uh, driven by, I think, John Candy mm. in um, Great Outdoors. Uh, I'm thinking big, lazy engine, big, yeah. hairy car, under, under. Yeah, you're right. Frightening, isn't it? Mm. Um, 86 miles an Oh, hour. my word. Top speed, 86. I, I think you have to... Americans don't understand why we drive such small cars. We don't understand why they are small cars with small engines. We don't understand why 2.4 litre engine in, in the UK would be a, an absolute monster. Yeah. But I think it's all down to distance. Is they, they rev far lower and you need the car to do much higher distances in America. And people do travel much further than they do mm. in the UK. I mean, 50 miles in the UK can be an absolute hellish drive. Um, through towns and cities and da da da, it's very slow. You're not getting up to speed. Fifty miles in America can be, you know, as people listening, will be yeah. will be in the middle of nowhere. You might not see another person for fifty miles. <laughs> it's never going to happen in the UK. Mm. 
Mm. Final one. Here we go. Okay. Uh, 1988 Opal Manta B GSI 1.6. Oh, I used to love the sound of the mm. Opal Manta. I can definitely say over. Over. Well it's done. Be over. Hey, hey, you've got uh, 10, uh, 10 out of 15 there. Well done, oh, you're the winner on tonight's Sale of the Century with me and Nicholas Parsons. And we're indebted to Richard Green, who created this quiz in a matter <laughs> of minutes off the top of his head. Simon <laughs> walked away with the keys to a 1987 FSO Polonaise. Not yes. the car, just the keys. So oh. thank you for taking part and good luck on your way back to sunny North London. Uh, that's about it from us. <laughs> good fun. Yeah, it was a good one to this week. Uh, a Halloween, <laughs> Halloween special. <laughs> I got this music again. I'm addicted to this music. To go play on. Out. There we go. That's it from us this week. <laughs> <laughs> you rang. Uh, email the boys at carboys at outlook dot com. Uh, the, email the boys. Car boys the Z at Outlook.com. We will endeavour to read answer your questions, be they car related or not. Facebook, we're car hyphen boys at car boys. Boys with four Zs on the end. Car hyphen boys with a Z at car boys. Boys with four Zs. Twitter, we're car hyphen boys at car underscore boys. Boys always with a Z with a Z at the end. Right, that's it. Get lost, get a life. Say goodbye, Simon. Goodbye, Simon. <laughs>